Okay, so we're gonna convert this tennis tutor ball machine into a pickleball tutor ball machine for uh, just a few bucks. If you have a 3D printer, <clears throat> we're gonna print these wheels out or you can send them off to be printed. Uh, there's plenty of links and companies that'll do that with the files that I provide in the, in the so, info. If you don't know how to do that, there's plenty of videos out there to, to teach you. Okay, it's just a few bolts, and then here's what you're left with, except for you'll have the stock wheels on here. This is what the stock wheels look like to shoot the tennis ball. They have a rubberized grip, and they're a little bit larger than the 3D model that I created. I also created a flat spot here on the hub, and I went ahead and put the, the hole with the threaded uh, quarter inch 28 uh, threaded hole here, same one that this hub has, so you can, oops, so you can literally just take the set screw out of here and put it into the, the new wheel. What you'll have to add is a rubberized coating. So I use rubber bands. Be sure and get number 82 rubber bands. Uh, I've, I've went through all the different sizes. Number 82 on Amazon, they're two and a half by half inch. They're nice and thick. And what I'll do is uh, take me a little tool like this or you can take a, a flat blade screwdriver for eyeglasses. And as you put them on, you, uh, let's see here. Well, let me get that. I'm trying to do it one handed. I'll run this around, run this around the wheel to, to get it nice and straight and uh, the tension even all the way around it. I did about two or three layers of these rubber bands. Uh, and then I sprayed it with some of this 3M uh, adhesive and kind of smoothed it around. And that way it made it one solid rubber band here. I noticed that I need about two or three layers to make solid contact. You might want to play with this. The way you kind of know is stick your ball in here and push it through. You can see it kind of flatten out. See, and it's making full contact and getting a good grip. If you're not getting enough grip, just add another layer of rubber bands and be sure and uh, glue them down because the centrifugal force of these wheels spinning started to levitate the rubber bands off and that's you know obviously changing your distance there. So that glue makes it kind of like one solid rubber band. I thought about trying some staples in there. I haven't tried that. If you come up with a better idea, please let me know. <clears throat> but this seems to work great. Just a few other notes. In the, uh, the Thingiverse link that I'm going to put in the, the description that has my 3D printer files, I linked a spacer that you can print along with the wheels. This right here, which I'm calling a bracket. And then uh, you'll need to print the spacer out one, two, three, four times. But what that does is that lifts this plate up a little bit so that... This can fit underneath the pickleball just a little bit bigger and it lifts this spring up as well. I went ahead and got a wing nut back here so I can easily take that off on location and flip this all back. These are hexes. I think these are number 10 by number 10 32 screws and this is two and that is two. Uh, but some of them actually this this might be number 10 32 and this might be number 8 32. Uh, use a thread. Uh, uh, checker, but it, you know you have to get them a little bit longer since you're adding spacers so you go to Home Depot and uh, Get a little bit longer screws. These are definitely number 832 and I went ahead and got like inch and a quarter Here you can see the spacers that I added down here But what was happening was this ball was getting stuck here and uh, So I needed to lift that up also Down in here. It was kind of getting pinched here. I took a Dremel with a sander and I just barely sanded out the ridge here. That way, uh, it was just a little bit bigger. It's, it, it is still worked perfectly fine for a tennis tutor with a tennis ball. It won't affect anything. And then right here, I noticed that the drop was bringing the ball down when this was lower, where it was hitting this bottom one first. And then it was kind of giving an inconsistent feed. I'd rather it hit the top one first. And again, it's just a Phillips screw here and here with this wheel off, out of the way, and you can lift this up. 
The last thing I did, which greatly in, increased my uh, consistency, was I put some Velcro sticks right here and right here, because this was flexing and giving me inconsistent feeds. And this would actually help with the tennis ball as well. It was just, it had always been a problem here. But then I went ahead and put the opposite side of the Velcro here and here, and I reach up in the ball machine when I'm done, and I make sure that this is Velcroed really taut to the top of that chute. And then also while I'm here, don't forget to plug this back in. This is your oscillator plug when you get the lid back on. That's the only thing that'll come unplugged. But anyways, that'll really help with the consistency. As far as getting the wheel off, there's a little set screw on the original wheel that's set at a 30 degree angle. I think this is a, it's a really odd size Allen wrench here, but it goes in at about a 30 degree angle and you just loosen it up. And then this is with the original wheel, you can just slide it right off. Notice the, the, the axle has a flat spot here. On the original, they didn't have a flat spot, so I went ahead and drew that in, so it'll help even more with setting it in place. But uh, one problem I had is these, these threads on my printed wheel are made of plastic, so I ended up stripping the threads. Uh, I went ahead and tightened this hub up a little bit, and that since then I haven't had an issue with that. But uh, one idea I had was to replace the plastic threads with this right here, I linked it on my Thingiverse uh, description, but it's called a helicoil. Right now I only have uh, a larger one, but uh, I've got one on order for quarter inch dash 28, which is the actual thread size of this set screw. But uh, what that'll look like, I put the larger one in this one, is uh, right there. See, it'll actually give it metal threads. Uh, so that'll increase the strength of these threads if you're having a problem with it stripping out. Uh, one thing you want to be careful of is that it's going too far in. I don't know if it'll even slide on here. Yeah, it still does. So, so that ought to be able to, and I went ahead and put the uh, set screw on both sides, even though you wouldn't need it on both sides. That way, if you strip one, you can flip the wheel around and do the other one. But that's, that's what it'll look like. As far as setting in and out, what I do is I drop the ball down and then I look here. To see, I line it up. Okay, that'll be about my spot. And then I come back over here and I tighten it down. And then that one's set. And then same thing for the bottom side. Put the ball in here and I check down here, move it in and out, and then I, and then I set it. And then you're done. Here I'm just reaching back up in here and plugging in the oscillator and then I'm pushing this up under the metal and then I bring this down I uh, I've been leaving these two out because it's an odd size uh, hex and just leaving these two in and that way all the hexes that I might have to remove are all the same sizes it's perfectly stable without it so and then uh, like I was saying reach up in here and make sure oops uh, it's hard to see but make sure that shoot there it is is really velcroed up nice and high and taut. That'll really increase your consistency. Uh, this thing was just flexing when the ball, every time the ball dropped and it was entering a different spot on the wheel. So that really increased my consistency. Last thing I just wanted to point out that the reason this is cool is I really wanted to maintain my ability to convert it back to a tennis ball machine with ease. So you'll notice that you can actually reach in here with your Allen wrench once you get everything put together with your spacers you could probably leave your spacers in place for the tennis ball. I haven't tried this, but be just fine leaving them. You can loosen this wheel, take it off, slide it out through here, slide your new wheel on. In five minutes, you're back to a tennis ball machine. Or if you lose a few rubber bands, you can slide this wheel out and fix your rubber bands. I haven't really discovered how durable those bands are gonna be. A lot of this, what looks like dry rod is probably the glue, but I've only been using it for a day. So uh, once again, if you have any ideas on how to improve this uh, let me know but right now it's it seems to be working really great Oop, my own. i wanted to add that i used a mono price mini 3d printer it's only like 120 bucks on amazon it's got a 120 by 120 plate and i pretty much maximized my print size 
but uh, you know it's 120 bucks or you can send the .stl files out to a multitude of companies and just have them printed for you if you're not into 3d printing so just click on the thingiverse file or the tinkercad file and there's there's links on there to have it sent off and printed i don't know what it costs probably not much